Byron Malott is the Lieutenant Governor of Alaska. He joins us to discuss his state's response to climate change through the work of the Climate Action for Alaska Leadership Team. Lieutenant Governor Malott, thank you for joining us and welcome. Thank you so much. Let me ask you uh, to tell us about the Climate uh, Action for Alaska Leadership Team. I know it's been around for about a year. Why was it formed and what is its task? In the four years that Governor Walker and I have been in office, our work had principally been with the Arctic Council uh, and focusing on Arctic policy, which of course is driven to a large degree by climate change. And with the recent changes in the federal administration and uh, not so much a focus on climate change, we believe that we, at the subnational level, the state of Alaska level, we need to stand up uh, our own climate change effort. Uh, and this is the result, the purpose of what we call the CALT or Climate Action Leadership mm -hmm. Team is to engage with as many Alaskans as possible across our vast state, the institutions, uh, uh, tribal groups, uh, so that every voice that uh, chooses to be involved in climate change can be involved. We also have a cabinet level working group on climate change and the whole purpose is to have Alaska meet its obligations both to its own citizens and of course to the world. Uh, about that change at the federal level that you talked about, there was recently a Washington Post article about a Pentagon study, an Obama era Pentagon study that was edited by the Trump administration to delete somewhere upwards to 25 references to climate change, in, including some in Alaska. Right. How do you navigate that, the difference between the science of climate change and the politics of climate change? Well, from the Alaska perspective, uh, you'll note that we haven't removed the word climate change or climate from, uh, from the verbiage that we use, and that's done consciously. Uh, it is recognized globally as a, as a real issue, one that we need to come to grips with and uh, allows us to, uh, even in Alaska where our emissions, uh, even though we're a vast country, our emissions are de minimis compared to many other places. Uh, we believe that we must do our part, but also Alaska is a place in which climate change is already impacting us in very uh, observable ways. Uh, we have erosion from sea ice uh, leaving the coast. We have uh, patterns of weather change. We have in the North Pacific Ocean, uh, 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 ocean water change, uh, temperature changes taking place. We have ocean acidification moving, moving further north. Uh, we have had impact on fisheries already, economic impact. We have social impacts across our state. And of course, we are bordered with Canada and we know that their northern places are also experiencing much of the same that, uh, that we are in Alaska, and so we're working to make common cause uh, with, with them. We're talking with folks in Hawaii, for example, about the impact of climate change on the Pacific Basin. So uh, where, where are, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Where, where are the most acute circumstances that you're dealing with? Where, what are the areas of most immediate need? I know, for example, there are right. villages on permafrost that is melting that yeah. may need to be relocated. Yeah. What are some of the most acute circumstances? There have been some 30 communities identified principally in river, river and coastal areas, several of which have already begun the process of moving such a move of even a very small village, of course, costs hundreds of millions mm -hmm. of dollars uh, and takes a lot of planning. We have, working with the federal government, working with local and regional institutions, have begun the movement of one village, uh, New Talk, which when moved will have a new name, Matarvik. Uh, we're working with several other villages. Coastal erosion is, uh, it is a growing issue. We have melting permafrost, uh, which affects not just communities or people, but affects the entire ecosystem and mm -hmm. quite, uh, impacts whole habitats where so many living creatures uh, reside. We have, as I mentioned earlier, in the North Pacific, which borders uh, 
a good third of our state. The, uh, uh, the impacts of water temperature warming is uh, growing and very significant. We have weather pattern changes. We have now uh, uh, become very alert to rising temperatures which allow uh, species, uh, for example, of ticks and, and, and other uh, uh, insect-based species uh, to move into Alaska, which can cause a huge difficulty with, uh, with local resident populations. So it's a gamut well, and it is We see that here with mosquitoes in, the, yes. in Virginia and in DC area, in Maryland. So uh, what are some of the key recommendations <coughs> that are gonna come out of your team and how popular are they in an oil producing state that right. you wouldn't expect to lead on things like carbon right. taxes? Well, we uh, know that our economy and our national economy, literally the world economy, still depends on the development of fossil resources. And we uh, are no exception. We have a significant percentage of our state revenues come from petroleum. But we are also cognizant that we need over time to move away from that reliance and we are very aggressively doing so, particularly on the fiscal side. But we also know that it will take revenues from all sources to allow us to have the fiscal capacity to deal with climate change as it, as it does evolve. And we hope that uh, 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 we can establish realistic timeframes to move away from reliance on, on, on fossil fuels to at least as a bridge uh, source be able to use more natural gas. We uh, also uh, plan that uh, revenues in that transition will be available from fossil fuel sources uh, to help meet climate change goals. But we also know that there at some point has to be a hard stop Mm -hmm. uh, and the achievement of a point in which non-fossil fuels uh, can become the source of energy for all of us. How, how far down that road are you to a plan that has broad-based agreement from the populace, from the politicians, from private industry? As you mentioned at the outset, we have now been in existence for one year. That is the climate change effort. Uh, I've been surprised at the lack of pushback uh, in the Alaska population when we say that we must continue at some level and for some period of time to develop our fossil fuel resources. I think that most people are saying that's okay, but let's get to a point where we can see the end state. Mm -hmm. And that is something we hope to be able to evolve within the next several years. And, and what do you hope to achieve during your visit to Washington? I had a meeting this morning with the Chinese embassy talking about climate change, which of course is a huge issue in that vast nation. Uh, we are discussing the Alaska gas line project, uh, which is uh, 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 a potential source of natural gas to China, which would help uh, reduce their emissions largely from coal in a very significant way. Uh, we discussed a visit that I will take to China this July to discuss climate change in a very specific way uh, and Arctic policy. Uh, China has published its own Arctic framework uh, for policy making and we'll have conversations about that. Uh Final thought, which I hope won't uh, sound too sort of lofty here, but I'm wondering, do, do you view yourself, do you view the state of Alaska as uh, being a leader globally on this in a way where it's an honor, if California takes the kind of moves you're making, no one is surprised. But if Alaska does it, that will raise some eyebrows. Well, first of all, Alaska geographically is really another country. If we were not part of the United States, we'd be a, a quite significant nation in our own right. But we have a small population. And so that is both opportunity. It is also uh, a cautionary tale with, with regard to having the resources, intellectual as, as well as monetary, in order to uh, mm. uh, 
uh, in order to deal with our future. We are heavily impacted by climate change already in the ways and more uh, that, I've, uh, that I've just mentioned. And so we believe that in acting to deal with the consequences of a changing climate in our own state, that what we do can help others. And we are reaching out actively to other parts of the globe uh, in order to both learn and hopefully contribute. Finally, one of the things uh, that we are doing at the state level is looking to work with indigenous people in the Pacific and particularly across Canada and hopefully into Russia uh, to develop an indigenous climate change alliance because indigenous people live largely in coastal areas along river systems, uh, uh, in low-lying areas uh, uh, of our globe. And the climate change space, while it is very significant, while it is already very robust in terms of science and research, still has a long way to go in terms of developing the public policy, the, even the societal changes that will result. And so having the voice of indigenous people in that space we believe is important. Living off the land puts you in the front lines of this, of this battle. Well, uh, Byron Lott, thank you very much thank for joining you. us today. We wish you continued success. I'm glad you're part of the United States and Good. not your separate country, yeah. as you said. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you.